Hello everyone. It is Friday afternoon and I'm so excited because I'm off work for the week and the weekend is coming and I hate to say it, but Fridays and the weekends are my absolute favorite days of the week. I know they say you shouldn't wish away Monday through Thursday, but I do tend to do that a little bit. But I'm very excited to have you here with me today to talk to you about something that to me has been life changing. And that is two books that I have heard on Audible and I guess you could read them as well, but I've discovered this brand new service. Well, it's not brand new, but for me, the Audible service is brand new in that, you know, you listen to audiobooks. And what I have learned over the past month of listening to these two, for me, life changing books on habits, um, is that Audible is a wonderful service if you don't just want to read the book and see the words on the page. Because for me, when I read, I read very quickly. I always have but I tend to like go through this book and that book and that book or pieces of the different books. And I don't really necessarily absorb the tools and techniques in each book that I'm reading. And I read a ton of self-help. Um, I guess that's because it's about my favorite topic, which is myself. Um, actually, that's not really true. I read a lot of self-help because I needed a lot of help during the years. I had you know, a little bit of depression. I had different issues that I wanted to help solve and self-help always kind of, at least I thought I was making progress in those areas. But after reading these two books or listening to them on Audible, I realized that all of those books that I read did not have the impact of these two habits books on my life. And I never realized before starting into these books how important our habits are to us. I mean, think about it. Everything that you are and I am right now is the result of the habits that we have done on a daily basis, sometimes for years. For instance, if we have the habit, you know, when we see the couch in the evening of sitting down with a bowl of ice cream or a big thing of popcorn every night and watching TV for four hours, <laughs> excuse me, that is going to have long-term impact on our health. Another example, we have the habit that we get up in the morning, you know, brush our teeth and do that kind of thing, and we work out every morning. If we develop that as a habit, think about what that does for you in the short term, but also what that habit promotes in your life over 10, 20, 30 years. And these habits books that I've read, these two books are just incredible. And I will have a way for you to get them at no charge, at least one of them. You can get at no charge from Audible and you can get a free 30 day Audible membership. And there's information below the video and I'll put it on here for you. First, let me have a little swig of my green tea. And actually in the morning I have a cup of coffee and I do love my coffee but I had wanted to get green tea into my life because they say it's a great antioxidant, it's good for your heart, it's good for fat loss, it's good for all of these wonderful things to do with your health. And it really wasn't until I delved into these habits books that I figured out a habit to put it into my life. So what I do is I drink coffee in the morning before I go to work because I do love my coffee. But then basically on the way out the door, I use my Keurig to put hot water and a tea bag into a big uh, car cup. And then I take the green tea, and this is jasmine green tea, ah, jasmine green tea, which is one of my favorite types of green tea. I just think it tastes so good, jasmine green tea, love it. But basically, um, I take that green tea with me in my car cup to work, and then I've got those tea bags at work too, and I just you know, continue heating up the filtered water out of the little machine at work, and uh, then I drink green tea all day. And so this is green tea, and it is really, really good. Okay, now this is a really, really chatty video and I will tell you how I stumbled onto this habits area, which is crazy fantastic. How it happened is that before Christmas, I was looking for another gift to add to my son Collins. I've got two sons, Dylan and Colin, to his Christmas and we had bought he and his wife a kayak, uh, which is what they wanted. They moved to Grand Rapids, Michigan and they're very outdoorsy. I would never want a kayak. I am not Miss Outdoors, but they love that stuff. So anyway, I wanted to get him a few more gifts and he is very fitness related. So I looked up fitness gifts for men on Amazon before Christmas and I found this book that was incredibly highly rated and here it is. It is called The Little Black Book of Workout Motivation and it was $8 and it was prime and of course I was last minute so I had to get it in really fast. And so I gave him that book, but when it came in Amazon, I started flipping through that book 
And I thought, oh my gosh, this isn't just workout motivation, although it was great for that, has wonderful truths about uh, women and fat loss and women and weightlifting and, and things that I had never really realized. It also has great truths about motivating ourselves for our lives. And basically what this book says is kind of forget about all that law of attraction thing we've all heard for the past 10 years. And I bought it too, girls, just the idea that, you know, if you want to be rich and, I don't know, famous and happy, then you just sit there in your chair and do nothing. But you just imagine, thank you, God, that I'm rich and famous and happy. Well, I tried that a lot and I read a lot of those books and it didn't really work. I mean, I'm all for positive thinking and positive habits for sure. And I think there's definitely power in that. But this book reminded me that, you know, you got to old fashioned, it uh, though it is, you got to suit up and show up and do those things that you need to do to create a better life for yourself now and in the future. And ladies, we are responsible for our lives. And I like to think we're responsible for every detail in our life. Well, pretty much. And the second habit book I'm going to tell you about does talk about that, that we are responsible for all the details of our lives. Even if unfair things can happen, and sometimes they do, we're at least responsible for how we react to that and making lemons out of lemonade, as they say. Okay, so in this wonderful book, which I hadn't wanted to mention to you now because it's going to be in my weight workout video that I'll show you down the road, because it is a powerful, powerful book. But it mentioned habits or one of these habit books. Maybe it was the Atomic Habit book. And these are the two books that I'll be showing you today through the Audible. And I will say there is nothing like Audible because for the first time in my life, instead of just hurriedly reading, as I mentioned before, I have been listening to these two habits books over and over and over again in the past month. And they have been you know, feeding my body, mind, and spirit and like sinking into this head and I have made positive changes. And I'll tell you some of the habits I've created and some of the results I'm having in just a few minutes. But the first book is by James Clear and it is Tiny Changes, Remarkable Results, Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. And James Clear was very interesting in that he definitely took lemons and made lemonade because he was a very promising baseball player. Everyone thought in high school that he would be a professional baseball player. Well, at the end of his junior year, somebody swung the bat in front of him. Maybe he was the catcher, I don't know. Or maybe the bat flew off. But anyway, it smashed him in the face, broke his nose, gave him head injury. He bled profusely. If they had not gotten him to the hospital, he would have died. But anyway, he basically went from this promising young baseball player to somebody that was fighting to be able to talk, to be able to walk, everything. And over the course of the next few years, he ended up going to college and he developed very excellent habits that helped him not only survive this terrible injury and heal from it, but really thrive in the rest of his life. And that is a fabulous book and one that has really, really impacted me. And I won't tell you the specific details of that book because these two books kind of meld together for me. And I actually probably like the second book better because it's a little more... Like he's just kind of talking to you. Um, anyway, the second book, I'll get to the second book. The second book is Superpower by Habit. And oh, no, it's Superhuman by Habit. There it is, Superhuman by, by Habit. A guide to becoming the best possible version of yourself one tiny habit at a time. And in this book, this young man says that up through college, pretty much, he was pretty darn lazy. He had very bad work habits. He had very bad life habits. He said, you know, anytime they, you know, he'd have to be somewhere, he would be late. Anything like he'd have to get his driver's license in by a certain month. He said he would be months late. Uh, he would stay up late, play video games with a lot of his life, sleep late in the mornings, very undependable, just terrible habits. And he realized that his habits were so bad that he would probably never be able to make enough money to support his lifestyle. He was also kind of an introvert and he had kind of introverted social habits. And there's nothing wrong with that, but his habits, the things he were, was doing on a daily basis, he worried about he would never be able to find a, a good girlfriend because he was so antisocial in his habits and he had kind of a negative attitude about himself, that kind of thing. Now I've gone on way too long about the background of these two books and I won't really delineate between the two books 
but I'll tell you some of the important ideas in the books, and I can't possibly give you all of the ideas because there are so many of them. But basically, the books are about setting up good habits in your life. And to do that, what you do is you think ahead, maybe 10, 20, 30 years, and think to yourself, and do do this because it's really important, what do I want to be in, say, 90, 85 years old? How do I want my life to look? Do I want to be healthy and beautiful and, you know, mentally there? Uh, do I want to be still active? You know, that kind of thing. Just figure out how you want your life to look and then think about what habits that type of person that you're seeing there at 85 or 90, what type of habits that person would, would really need to have to get there. And I have really realized through this that it's the little tiniest things that we do on a daily basis that make a huge difference in our life. For instance, like flossing our teeth. If we do that every day, we'll not only avoid cavities and tooth decay for the most part, but we'll actually, over the long term, that will help us from like getting heart disease and that kind of thing. They, they've linked tooth decay to heart disease. So just that simple act of creating a habit to floss your teeth every day is going to make you not only look better in terms of your smile, it's going to make you actually be healthier decades in the future. Some of the important ideas in the books. The first is habit chains. And this is what you do. Once you decide the kind of habits you want to adopt, you create what you call habit chains. And a good way to do that is to start with something that is a given in your life, like getting up in the morning, right? Okay, I guess I'll tell you my habit chain that I created. Let me go to my little uh, cell phone list here. And I have a little list that I call habits because at first you need to kind of write them down so that you remember them. Now in my morning routine, I just do it and I don't even have to think about it after 30 days. It's just really become ingrained. Okay, first habit when I wake up and put my feet on the floor, I get my slippers on, and then I say, this is going to be an awesome day. Thank you for this awesome day. And I kind of say that to myself as I'm walking in the bathroom. Then I insert my little drops, which are my Lumify drops, to whiten my eyes. And it takes a few minutes for them to go into effect. So then I brush my teeth using my Sonicare toothbrush for three minutes. And that was the thing I never did before, before the habit thing. I would get bored after like a minute of brushing my teeth with that Sonicare. My husband could always wait because he's a delayed gratification person, but I never could. So I would do it for like a minute, a little bit more than a minute and stop it. But then I realized that little tweak in that habit, what were my teeth and what was my health going to be like in 20 years if I did brush three minutes a day, twice a day? So that got me into actually doing the three minutes on the Sonicare, which is a really good thing. And then I floss my teeth and I floss my bridge. Um, it's a long, long story and I won't go into it here, but it has to do with some of the things I did to cure myself of rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and so anyway, I have a bridge in there. So I would never hardly floss under that bridge. Maybe once a month, it was really bad. I floss my teeth very regularly. I better turn this down. Sorry, I floss my teeth very regularly, once a day usually, I was good at that. But flossing the bridge, I hardly ever did that. So now what I do in the morning is I brush my teeth for three minutes, then I floss my teeth and my bridge. I go ahead and put my contacts in. I take the laundry, I have a laundry basket in my closet. I take it into the laundry room and I put a load in if that's necessary, blacks or whatever. Then I make the coffee, I check the dishwasher and if it needs to be cleaned, I clean that out. I go get my cup of coffee because I started my cup of coffee when I first go into the kitchen. Then I go into this room actually, and you can't see it, but sitting here is my little computer and I have this thankfulness spreadsheet. It's kind of just an Excel spreadsheet and you list three different things you're looking forward to that you're thankful for in your day and why. And I got that out of the little black book of workout motivation as kind of an extra with that book. And I've been doing that for a month and it is wonderful. Then I go back into the kitchen I read my little book called Jesus Calling, and that's just my particular religious faith. And it's like a daily meditation thing. And I would advise you, if you also follow any religion, to use one of your own religious texts for that. And then I do a five minute meditation. And I'd always wanted to integrate meditation into my life, but I did it very sporadically. But now that I put it in that habit chain, right after I read the Jesus Calling book, then I do my five minutes of meditation. I just set my little cell phone timer here. 
and it is really wonderful and you just breathe in and out and whenever you think about something you just let it go and you come back to thinking about just your breath. I love meditation. Then I go into my bathroom, put my hair back, put on my little workout clothes and then I go down in the basement and I do this series of stretches which I won't tell you about until I do um, my workout tape which I will do down the road, my workout video. And then I do my weightlifting Monday through Friday and uh, a little bit of something different, a little cardio on the weekends. And then I have this deep breathing that I do, and I'll tell you about that in a future video, but it's pretty cool. And then I weigh and dry brush my skin. I take a cold shower, and that is another video in the future because I have really been finding that cold showers are helping my health like in crazy good ways. And then I dry myself off, apply body lotion, and then I apply my skincare and lash serums for the morning. I dress, then I style my hair, apply my makeup. Then I have a protein shake because with the weightlifting, it's good to have protein. And I have some fun things in that. And then at 7.20, my little cell phone goes off as a timer to remind me that, hey, in 15 minutes, you have to head out the door. And then at 7.35, my timer goes off again, which is my note to myself that I need to be in the car and drive to work. And I will tell you, this set of morning habits has, has really helped so many different areas of my life. The first one being my tardiness at work. Girls, I had a really bad habit of thinking, well, because my sister and I own the company, that my employees should be there at 8, but I can waltz in at 8.05, 8.07, 8.02, that, you know, that was kind of one of the benefits I gave myself that I didn't have to be there right at eight. But my sister was always there at eight and I knew that it really bothered her that I was not. And it was kind of hard because we had to cancel one employee on being on time. And uh, I felt really bad because I wasn't on time either. And so it was kind of like the pot calling the kettle black. Ooh, my eyebrows look terrible. Okay, so anyway, just in the past 30 days, I am like not only on time, but early for work every single day. And I just feel good about that. And I have certain other work habits that I do, and I won't go into all the details of that. If you want me to do a habits video about good work habits, I'd be glad to do that. But anyway, all of those habits, they've made me get those things into my life that I've always wanted to, like flossing under the bridge, flossing my teeth, doing the workouts in the morning. I never could consistently apply body lotion, and I've got a great body lotion, that Alpha Hydrox lotion, and now I'm doing that every morning just because I put it into the list of things that I do, and it has become a habit. And over time, I think that's really going to help my arm skin look a lot better. Also, I love the fact that it is easy in my morning routine to really get my laundry done and to empty the dishwasher. Because really, it's not like we have to go out on, you know, in the river with a washboard anymore. You know, getting the laundry done is a matter of, you know, sorting the darks and putting them in the washer and throwing the little laundry capsule in there and shutting it and going about your business. And then you come back an hour later and you put them in the dryer, you hang them up. And it used to be that the laundry would kind of pile up in my closet and then it would pile up in the laundry room and look messy. And it doesn't do that anymore. And there's just such a wonderful feeling that everything is done and in its place and that I'm on time to work and you wouldn't believe how much more productive I am at work with some of my work habits. It's pretty incredible. And don't think, you know, and I kind of thought this too, I thought, you know, maybe this is just one more way that I'm becoming more of a perfectionist. But really, it isn't like that at all. You're not going for perfection. You're going for a sense, number one, of ease in your life that some of these things that used to be hard to work in just automatically get worked in there. You just feel better about yourself because you're, you're, you're being the kind of person that you want to be. I want to be the kind of person that consistently works out. And really until this habit thing started, you know, it was a little more sporadic, I have to admit. You know, there were times I did it and then there were times I didn't do it. And in the second half, time is of the essence, girls. I mean, I am... I am over 60 <laughs> and uh, it's like it is time to really look at each day and get the most value we can out of each day and to really be the best person we can be. And that's what these habit books have taught me. Okay, let's get into getting you guys a free habits book. And what this is, it's audible.com and they have been very kind and given me a free code for you guys to use 
you go to audible.com slash 50 plus beauty. And for that, you'll get a free 30 day membership in audible.com, which is an Amazon company. It's right through Amazon. And you also get a free audio book. And they also give you two other, I think they call them originals. And I haven't even listened to their two originals yet. It's a huge amount of books and seminars and things you can listen to on their originals. Go there and follow that link and you can sign up for the free 30 days and pick your book. And it's very easy to cancel out. If you, you know, after 25 days, you don't like it, just cancel it out. There's no obligation there. It's very, very easy to do that. But if you like it, you just stay in the program and it's $14.95 a month and you get one audiobook plus the two Amazon Originals, I think they call them. And I absolutely love this so much that I'm going to do their 24 book a year program because life is short and I really want to learn more of this stuff. And the cool thing about these Audible books is that you don't realize how much time in your life you have to read by listening to audiobooks. Like for instance, when I do my laundry, when I do house cleaning, work in the yard, driving to and from work, sometimes at work if I'm doing something that doesn't require much, you know, thinking, something like, you know, typing or putting something in a list, I might listen to that audiobook at work. It's amazing how much you can accomplish in terms of getting new information when you have it in an audio format. Plus, you kind of come to like the reader. In both cases, the readers of these books are actually the authors, and especially in the Superpower by Habit book. The guy's named Tynan, and uh, it's a weird name, and he's weird because he only has the one name by Tynan, which I always think is weird, like Cher, what's her last name? You know, we don't know. But anyway, he's just so relatable. He, I don't know. It just makes you realize that if he could come from where he did, and same with James Clear in the first book. If they could come from where they did and really develop the wonderful life-changing habits they have, then anyone can do it. And something about these books in general just reminds me that, you know, that, that life is short and that we really do need to learn. And we can't do that if we just sit there and never read. And reading is so wonderful in an audio format or a book format, however you choose. But people have gone before us and they've made all the mistakes, just like that's what I hope to do on my channel because I've made all the mistakes. And now I've decided that if I have any little mission here on earth, who cares how big my channel gets? I just want to help even one person by sharing the problems that I've had in my life and how I'm overcoming them. Oh, and another thing, my next little project after this habits one is going to be studying happiness. And I am so excited to share that with you. And next week's video is going to be on, <laughs> this is totally off the habits thing, but it is on the loose body skin that we get, solving the problem of loose body skin. Because for some reason, ever since I've come to my channel, I have said to myself, you know, makeup is fun and it's fun and skincare is fun. But what I want to be able to solve is this horrible kind of loose body skin as we get when we're older. And I noticed my mother, who is 85 years old, but she's been on hormones the whole time and she seems very healthy. But, you know, she gets loose body skin. And I hate that. And I thought if I could solve one thing for women, because I know it frustrates me, probably you too, I would create something that would help us solve our loose body skin. And I think I have a way to do that. And I'll show you a video. And I did learn this technique and I'm kind of expanding on what this woman did in the video. But here is a before and after of, I think, well, I'm not going to tell you what it is she did, but here is her before picture after her second or third baby, maybe her first baby. I don't know, but it, poor thing, it really wrecked up her tummy. But there's a before picture. There's her after picture. And so she did a wonderful video on that. And I learned from her video and next week I'll link her video for you and I'll explain what she did and I will show you what I am doing once a month to really hopefully solve the problem of loose skin as we age. So that should be lots of fun. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to share with you. Well, number one, I've had a fantastic week. One of the things I did was, and I'm so happy about this, my son Dylan, who is 36 years old and not married, um, he's been dating this girl named Melanie for almost a year and a half, and they're looking for a house together, and apparently they're going to get married before they buy the house. 
I'm trying not to ask because I try, you know, I, I really want them to get married, but I try not to, not to get in there. But here's a picture of Dylan and Melanie. And we got to go looking at houses with them this week. And I really had to be careful because I have real opinions about houses because I never met a house I didn't love, but I always have these ideas of how to change it and improve it. And mama needs to keep her mouth shut. So anyway, that's what I've been doing this week. If you want to share anything that you have been doing this week that is fun, please do in the comments section below. Oh, one more thing. The Habits books really helped me with one thing which was horrible in my life. And that is that YouTube had gotten so crazy prominent in my life that I had to step back. And you all know that, that have followed my channel, um, that I had to sort of like, due to overwhelm, quit my videos for like six months. And thank you for coming back after that. I really appreciate it. But I thought, what habits do I have right now that have hurt me with YouTube in the past? And one of my problems was I was super obsessed and I was constantly checking my cell phone, looking at my comments, seeing how many subscribers I had, seeing, seeing how many viewers I had. And I realized that to be able to stay on YouTube, I just can't do that anymore. So I made myself a habit, which I can't believe I figured this out. But I allow myself to quickly look at my numbers, you know, views or whatever in the morning and in the evening. And then once I get home from work, you know, five o'clock, whatever, when I get home from work in the afternoon, I will reward myself by drinking a little protein smoothie and I'm getting this chocolate peanut butter flavor, which I love. And I will link that below because it's incredible. But I'll give myself that reward of drinking my little chocolate shake, basically, and doing my comments from my YouTube videos. So I only look at my YouTube three times a day and the morning and the evening are very, very quick. And then I do the comments and that's it. And so I am just leaving the rest of my life to be my life and it's making me feel much better, oh, I have to say. Okay, one last thing, and I'm sorry this probably has run so long, but I just wanted to tell you this. And if you will go and follow that link, audible.com slash 50 plus beauty, you can sign up to get your free 30 days and I would get one of those books because they're fabulous and I have links to them below. Okay, one last thing. During my last video, I asked you if you like the cards that I do at the end of the video because I thought my videos seem to be kind of long lately. Maybe you don't like them. Maybe you're bored by them. I wasn't sure. And all but one person said, and this was probably 30, 30, 40 people said, keep the cards, that's your signature. I didn't know I had a signature, but hey, I'll take that. So I'm going to choose a card here and let's just, you know, hope that we get a good one that helps a lot of us with a little issue we're dealing with in our life. Okay, here we go. Okay. When I allow others to support me, I support them too. When I allow others to support me, I support them too. Oh friends, that's a really good card and it is something that is hard for me to do and it's probably hard for you to do too. It is very easy for me to say, oh, you know, what can I do for you? Let me help you, whatever. But whenever somebody wants to help me, I don't know. I feel kind of embarrassed and I don't want them to help me. But you know, that's not a good pattern for any of us. We need to let others help us because that makes them, number one, feel good about themselves that they can help us. And number two, it just forges a bond between us because it can't be that we're giving and giving and giving and never accepting anything in return because really life is a give and take. So let's just go through our days and if there's ever a point in the day when someone asks us, hey, can I help you with that? Let's just say yes and feel great about that. Take care and I will see you in my next video, which hopefully is about firming our sagging skin.